going to be your um, reading for the upcoming full moon in Aquarius, which takes place on the 3rd of August 2020. Um, so this is going to be the first sort of major lunar cycle of August. Um, the moon cycles are currently a little bit out of sync with the solar cycle, so that's why um, we don't have a new moon to start the month. So um, this, this particular full moon is going to coincide with the energy of that Lionsgate portal. And um, I have done a separate video on it. Um, I did a special I Ching reading, um, which you can access. I'm going to link it at the end of, the, of this video. Um, I don't often do I Ching readings, but when I feel that um, something important needs to be kind of um, asked, I, um, I approach the I Ching. And I think that you'll find the message being an earth sign. I think you'll find the message um, quite inspiring. So do check that out if you haven't already. Um, but anyway, let's get into this reading and um, see what wants to come out for, for you, Virgo. Um, yes, you know, as I said, this is, this is going to be quite an interesting and powerful um, full moon for lots of reasons, not just because of the... Um, the energy of that Lionsgate portal, which will actually peak about five days after this particular full moon. Um, yes, um, your, your ruler Mercury is also going to be very active, so we're going to talk about that when we get into the reading. But I hope you've been well. I hope that um, you know everything is all right in your world and um, that you're managing to sort of keep a reasonably steady ship despite the uh, the stormy waves. Also just to say that um, I've had a few inquiries for um, the uh, sort of about the cards and the the casting cloth that I use here on YouTube when I do my geomancy readings and um, I actually I've made this myself I just made it because um, there wasn't anything available um, that I could use and somebody said that they would um, they'd love to purchase some cards some geomancy cards along with the ebook that I've done so I'm busy redesigning these cards because I don't think that they are terribly um, clear on on you know on videos so I'm, I'm redesigning the cards and then once I've done that um, I will probably offer them for sale as an, a sort of a, an alternative option so that if people want to buy a print version of the book they can also buy the cards with them so look out for that in the near future obviously I'll I'll announce it um, you know when that when we kind of come to that 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 period or you know but anyway let's get into your reading and find out what the <clears throat> what the earth wants to tell you the guardians of the four elements and the earth mother want to tell you about the upcoming two weeks that follow this particular full moon okay i think that's shuffled enough So let's see what wants to come out. Wow, okay, so interesting, uh, Virgo. There's possibly you have Pisces placements or um, um, there's a link. There's definitely a link to that Pisces reading. So do check it out as well, the, the Pisces geoscope for this particular full moon because you might, you might find it, um, you know, adds another layer for you. So as we go into this particular full moon, you are very keen on cultivating more happiness joy enthusiasm um, you know just kind of getting your spark back and i think you know it's fair to say that you know the last few months have been quite tumultuous for many of us and um, i think um, once you kind of get through that sort of fear bit um, you do sort of and you manage to kind of get back on an even keel you know it's nice to sort of um, to feel joy again so i think that's what you are concentrating on as you go into this this particular full moon Wow, so definitely um, you've got joy and happiness on your mind. 
uh, Laetitia repeated here in your fourth house. So joy for you is very much linked to home and family, that sense of belonging, um, that sense of having a safe haven, you know, away from sort of the storms of the external world, um, having been surrounded by loved ones, um, being in a home environment where you feel uh, loved and where you can express yourself. Um, these are things that are definitely on your mind as um, we enter this this new full moon phase. And of course, you know, for you, Leo season is very much a 12th house experience. So it is quite a sort of, um, not necessarily reclusive, but it does tend to sort of take you into that realm where you, where you want to sort of withdraw and you need time on your own. So I'm not surprised to see, um, you know, that home for you at the moment is, is quite a sanctuary. Interesting. But on the other hand, when it comes to relationships, particularly one-to-one -one relationships, uh, there does seem to be movement for you. Um, so we've got Veer here, which is the moon in Cancer. And um, Veer is all about travel, movement, flux, change. So it seems as though, um, you know, family for you is kind of, um, you know, whilst it's a source of enormous comfort and joy, there does seem to be sort of fluctuations happening here in your seventh house. So if you're single, for example, it's possible that somebody might be coming in. Um, and if you are um, attached, then perhaps your relationship is undergoing some kind of shift or um, growth or change of some kind. Not necessarily bad, you know. Um, it's good, you know, it's good. It's a good thing if our primary relationships evolve as we do. So that's interesting to see. But we'll learn more as, as we get more of the geomantic figures. Interesting. So... Um, yes, when it comes to career and um, sort of sole purpose and growth, it does look as though it grows and expansion for you is going to come through collaborations with others, particularly coming together with one other person. So if you are thinking about some kind of partnership here, a work partnership possibly, um, it does look quite favoured by conjuncture. This is after all Mercury in, in Virgo. So this is your ruling planet and ruling sign. So um, yes, if, if you have been thinking about kind of um, joining forces with somebody, um, this take this as a confirmation that that is a good way to go for you. Um, but anyway, I'm going to pause quickly while I do the rest of the geomantic figures and then we can get more into the, you know, the full moon and the Mercury aspects um, once I've done that. Hi Virgo, welcome back. As you can see, I've done the conversion, so let's get into your reading in a bit more detail. I think the best place to start is with the full moon itself. So this is across the 12th and the 6th houses. Now the moon will be in Aquarius here in your 6th house. This is the house of work and also of things like everyday routines, rituals, schedules, um, the things that we do sort of on a regular basis. Um, so it doesn't necessarily have to be just domesticity. It can also be the, you know, the, the the everyday tasks and things that you do in your workplace. It can sometimes also be the um, the workplace itself, so your office, and um, sometimes it's also pets or health. So here we've got cars here, and as you can see, both of these particular um, geomantic figures um, are ruled by Saturn. So in the 12th, we've got Tristia, which is Saturn in Aquarius, and here in the 6th, we've got Saturn in Capricorn, cars here. So Kase in many ways is about um, cutting things out or restrictions, blocks or impediments. So um, if we read this in relation to the full moon, full moons can sometimes be about what we need to release. And I think in this case, um, there's a kind of a case of um, restrictions or... Um, you know, I keep thinking of that saying, rejection is God's protection, um, particularly if we look at the outcome of your reading. Um, so it looks to me as though um, some form of work or where you work or the way that you work um, may be coming to an end or it's kind of being blocked. You, this sort of expansion is being blocked in this area, but it leads to, look, at literally protection. Fortuna Minor is the sun in Leo and it is often associated with protection. Um, and these, this can be from higher ups or it can be from, you know, higher dimensions. So, and then with the outcome of your reading is Acquisitia, which is really wonderful. It's expansion, it's gain, it is um, the fruits of your labor kind of coming good. So I kind of feel as though what's going to happen is that um, initially there's going to be this contraction or you're going to feel um, that a particular route is blocked for you. Um, but then from that is going to come growth so you know it may be that you, whatever um, form of 
of work that you've been doing, your main, your kind of, your source of income up until now, because we've got the second house, we've got Cardo Draconis here, which is the end of a cycle. Um, so I kind of think that some form of work may dry up, um, but in its place is going to come something else that's far more um, lucrative, number one, and may also be a lot more satisfying. Um, because, as I say, after we after Carse comes Fortuna Minor, followed by Acquisitio. So this is, as I say, it is um, help, protection, goodwill, and assistance from the universe and from others. And then it's and then we've got gain, which is often financial gain. Um, and isn't it interesting that we've got uh, Fortuna Major both in your fifth house and your eighth house? So I kind of feel as though if we look at the tenth house here, we've got Conjuncture, which is, as I say, it is your um, planet and sign it's Virgo and it's Mercury and Virgo so this is about collaborating particularly with one other person when it comes to career and um, you know kind of your sole purpose and interesting that we've got this movement happening in your seventh house which as I say can be about collaborations work collaborations not just necessarily romance so um, this seems to be confirmed by Fortuna Major in your fifth and your eighth houses. Now, the eighth house is about um, combined efforts, joint um, joint efforts. It can be joint ventures. Um, it's, you know, kind of um, using or combining or sharing resources, usually with one other. Um, so it can be, you know, a work partnership, for example. And then in the fifth house, we've got Fortuna Major as well. Again, the sun in Leo. Also very fortunate success, serendipity. Uh, things kind of coming together without much effort. And this is the house of creative collaborations and also new startups because the fifth house is, is related to speculation of all kinds. So not just gambling, but also, you know, if you think about a new project, creative project or business venture, it is in a way a gamble. It's taking a risk on something new. You don't really know how it's going to turn out. And here we've got Fortuna Major twice. So it really looks to me as though there is some kind of um, out of this initial loss is going to come um, some form of collaboration, which is actually going to put you onto your path, your, your kind of soul path, and has the potential to be extremely successful, particularly if it involves some kind of collaboration with one other person um, that may have a um, either a creative element or be in the field of working with children, so some kind of, you know, education, um, leisure, the sort of the leisure industry, the arts, um, these are both ruled by the fifth house. Um, sport as well is also ruled by, um, by the fifth house. So all of those types of um, collaborations seem to have the potential to be enormously successful. So on the face of it, um, the, the, the full moon may seem quite negative. Um, and initially, I think that's the way that it might present, given that um, in the build up to this full moon and in the aftermath, sort of afterwards, we've got um, uh, these quite challenging Mercury aspects that are happening. And of course, for you, um, Mercury is your ruling planet. So these are going to be perhaps more impactful on Virgos than, than some of the other signs. Now, Mercury is currently sitting in your 11th house, which is the house of social networks, friends, and kind of group efforts. Um, and isn't it interesting that here we've got the geomantic figure of Mercury in Gemini, Albus. So Albus is about, it can be about fresh starts. It's about, um, it's literally white. So it can be about mental detachment, it can be about intellectual clarity, it can be about contracts, um, it's a blank sheet of paper, so it can be a sort of like almost a blank slate, but on the other hand it can also be about illumination. So it could be that through um, through whatever these aspects are, the, these um, whatever happens as a result of these Mercury aspects, because Mercury will be making an opposition to Jupiter Saturn and Pluto here in your fifth house is going to come greater clarity. So I, f I kind of feel as though these are going to work with this, this lunar energy to sort of show you why certain things may have to kind of leave your life so that other things can come in that are going to be more beneficial. 
So, um, you know, if you can see these aspects, as challenging as they are, as being about a kind of almost rebalancing um, of energies that might be a little bit stuck, you know, Kase is about stuck energy, um, then I think you're going to see that um, even though on the face of it, like the moon, they may seem challenging, ultimately, um, when you look back, I think you're going to see that they they kind of pushed you onto your path of, of where you should have, you should be. Um, so I think that's just something to bear in mind, particularly during the, the first um, kind of portion of August when um, Mercury um, opposes first Jupiter, then um, Saturn, no, then Pluto and then Saturn. Um, so I think here it's going to be very important to, um, to sort of, listen to gather information um, to get clear about things rather than uh, react in a kind of knee-jerk way because there is that tendency with mercury in cancer to be a little bit emotive and equally at the full moon you know that can also amplify emotions and those kind of fight or flight instincts um, and that those first reactions may not necessarily be um, the best way to go the most constructive way to sort of move forward. Um, so I think just take a beat, try not to be pushed too much off kilter or to kind of overreact. Um, and once the dust settles, I think things will start to become very clear for you as to, you know, which way to go. And as I say, we've got, we've got this iteration here of Mercury in your 10th house, which is talking about collaboration and working with um, other people, possibly one other person. Um, it could be a creative collaboration. Certainly joint efforts uh, look good. Um, and the other thing to say here is that it may involve, um, you know, a family member because the fifth house can also be about children. And we've got all this wonderful light Tisha energy here, which is, you know, Jupiter in its, its kind of light, um, expansive, joyful, enthusiastic form. So um, it may also be that um, whatever this development is here in your fifth house, um, as far as Fortuna Major is concerned, so the sun in Leo, that during Leo season, um, that there, there are positive developments when it comes to children um, that, you know, that, that lead to, to more joy in your life. So, I mean, for instance, if, say, a job comes to an end, it means you've got more time to spend at home with children and family and that that can bring enormous joy and you know whatever this collaboration is may mean that you can work from home so um, it might sort of end up being that your your everyday day-to-day -day quality of life improves because you're not having to commute you're not having to go to an office that may not necessarily be um, a wonderfully healthy environment you know maybe it's got you know say air conditioning for example maybe it's in a smoggy city um, uh, you know, there, there are all those kind of um, potential upsides to what at first may seem like, um, you know, uh, a not so great development. So do, as I say, bear that in mind. Um, and then the other important thing to say about this particular um, full moon is that it will be making two aspects itself. So the first is a square to Uranus in Taurus. And... Um, for you, Taurus falls in your ninth house. So being an earth sign, obviously it will have resonances, um, you know, with you. Um, and so, so Uranus here is asking you to see things from a different perspective. This is Puer, which is about fresh starts, um, newness, um, you know, it can be about new beginnings. And I, I kind of feel as though what it's doing is it's asking you to sort of um, shift paradigms in the way that you see circumstances. So it's kind of seeing the higher perspective um, and from there, you know, um, we don't necessarily judge events as being wholly negative or wholly positive. We see their, their, their kind of role within the overall scheme of things. And so, as I say, negative events can then be revis envisaged or revisioned as something positive. Um, and then the second aspect that um, 
the sun and the moon will make is to Chiron and Aries. So this is your eighth house. And um, this is a very healing aspect. Uh, this is Chiron in retrograde. So there is an element of the past to whatever occurs now. And of course, eighth house for you is all about, as I said, joint ventures. It's about shared assets. And these can be both physical and um you know, emotional or psychological or spiritual. So it can be about, you know, joint um, physical possessions like money or shares or assets, for example. But it can also be about those things that we share with one, uh, one another in terms of emotional resources. So, you know, trust, uh, joint efforts, um, uh, you know, sex, love, um, those and goodwill, of course, you know, in a business. So, um, as I say, um, I think that Fortuna Major is reiterating the positive aspects that the Sun and the Moon are making to Chiron in this particular area. So, I do think that um, through working with others, there, you know, a healing can kind of take place. Not is it? It's not just looking as though it's going to benefit you, um, you know, in terms of your career. But I also think that it's going to benefit you on an emotional and a psychological level where it's going to prove to be quite healing. So I think the, the important thing during this particular two week period um, of the waning moon cycle, I think, is to um, to refrain from immediately judging external e events that kind of crop up now, particularly if they seem negative on the surface, you know, such as a job loss um, and to just wait to see what what follows from that. Um, which looks to me as though it could be some kind of new uh, venture or, you know, creative collaboration of some kind um, that could lead on to, to gain and success and expansion in the future. So that's really positive, um, Virgo. I think, you know, um, you, I think during this period it is really important to refrain from judgment, given that we've got this strong Mercury um, aspects to the outer planets which are also about kind of knowledge wisdom mastery and that kind of thing um, so it's important to kind of keep a balanced outlook to be prepared to see things in, from a new perspective and um, and to to sort of expect the best you know to kind of like plan for the worst but expect the best I think that's the best way to to view this particular um, two-week phase so I hope that's been helpful um, do you know um, Check out my Astro Insights that I do on, on my other platforms like Facebook and Instagram because those will supplement, um, you know, what I'm kind of telling you now in terms of trends with the astrology. Um, and also, um, you know, check out that I Ching video that I did um, for the, the Lionsgate portal because I think it will also be useful um, in terms of dovetailing with what I'm saying about, um, you know, the way that we react to, to events. Um, so check that out, the link that, that um, I've put at the end of this video. But I'm wishing you all the very best, many um, full moon blessings, and I'll catch you again in a couple of weeks.